So the story of Mary Magdalene has an enormous amount of shame attached to it. Uh, her name carries a great burden, a great weight uh, for many people in the name of Christ and Mary Magdalene were murdered in the millions over the last 2000 years. Um, her bloodline was massacred, her friends, her followers, they were all swiftly burned at the stake, crucified or murdered um, en masse all over Europe in an effort to remove Mary Magdalene as the wife of Jesus and remove any evidence of her bloodline um, or evidence of their marriage. Uh, hence, we have the Gnostic Gospels, for example, like the Gospel of Philip, um, removed from the Bible purposefully because therein Jesus is said to kiss Mary Magdalene often on the mouth in public. So this makes us question, well, what man 2000 years ago, certainly a rabbi, a Jewish rabbi, a prince of his kingdom, a Davidic prince, would never be seen kissing a woman on the mouth in public, lest she be his wife. And this is a very crucial point for also the bathing and anointing of the feet and head with spikenard oil, which Mary Magdalene is written to have done twice in the New Testament, was in fact a bridal ritual. The first time that she bathed and anointed Jesus's uh, feet was uh, the engagement ceremony, the first marriage. Um, and then the couple would have uh, procreated and had a second marriage um, when she was with child. And um, Mary Magdalene was said to be with child at the crucifixion. And her husband, Jesus, um, had, they had been recently married in Cana, that was their wedding. And otherwise, why would Mother Mary be so concerned that there was no wine at the wedding? So um, there's a lot of history that's been misinterpreted and rewritten as truth. And um, I really took it onto myself to right these wrongs of history because they needed to be um, uh, explained as they truly were. For if we're to fully um, embody and um, experience the true messianic cause, then we shall have to first understand this truth that Yeshua and Mary Magdalene were married and they bore sons and um, their marriage was prophesied as uh, two messiahs were expected and Mary Magdalene is the color messiah, the feminine Christ. And now the feminine Christ is said to uh, be here today in the world. And this is why we have this awakening happening all around the world towards the feminine divine. For she hails in the age where the goddess is returned to God's side. For it was with Mary Magdalene's story that the goddess was set aside as were all things divine feminine, called prostitutes and whores. Anyone who wore red was considered to be a prostitute and a whore. Um, yet the color red, the woman in red, they were the priestesses. They were the uh, lineage of the divine feminine on earth. And Mary Magdalene was one, of the, one such woman in red. So now we have a church where the cardinals all wear red. So they've denigrated women and any woman who wears red or wears red nail polish is a prostitute basically, while they themselves wear red and take the power of the Shakti of the feminine divine for themselves, yet they utterly misuse their power, of course. We can see that it's quite obvious, I would say. And, you know, I mean no, dis no disrespect to anyone's religion. If you're a Catholic, then be a true Catholic, but do not put faith in false leaders or men who claim to be something that they are not. The Jesus line continued with Yeshua's family, but it continues still today um, through all of us. In our consciousness, we are being called to awaken to these mysteries. For as the divine feminine is returned to God's side, so too does all things a divine feminine, feminine divine, return and flood into the collective consciousness, healing and uh, bringing compassion and kindness and love and goodness and virtue 
and chastity and purity back into society, which surely is being broken down right now by the elite who are driving humanity into great darkness. So this time has been much talked about and it is our sacred duty to reach into these mysteries and embody them and rise up in consciousness together, united, understanding in spirit, the power that we are, the beauty, the wholeness, the perfection that we all are, to let go of our criticisms and our judgments of one another, to see the bright shining light, the spark of beauty that is there inside all living beings, and to fan the flames of devotion in our own hearts and uh, light the torches of others as we rise. And this is our call from the kingdom. And uh, this is how we will experience a positive change on the earth. And of course, we want to do this for the sake of our children and our children's children who shall inherit the earth from us. And uh, if we do not go this route and rise up in our consciousness in spirit and break the chains of the illusions to which we have subscribed, then most surely we are not setting the correct example for our children and we shall not liberate them from suffering in the, in the future. So let us seek, let us find and let us be inspired and let us rise up in God's name, whatever you call God, call out to God, say your prayers, do your holy practices and live as Jesus and Mary Magdalene would have wished you to live. And if you're not a Christian, I'm actually not a Christian, um, but I love Jesus and Mary Magdalene and I love their story and I'm dedicated to sharing the truth of their story because I believe that it will unite all people around the world of all religious belief, because that was the messianic cause. So mote it be in Rade's name, God bless you all.